Good morning and welcome to this Palm Sunday service uh, from the Manse of New Covenant Parish Church. If you know of someone who doesn't have internet but would like to hear the service, you can help them using the instructions below. Arrange a time when you're both free. Get ready to play the service on YouTube. Phone your friend using your landline and their landline. Put your landline phone as close to the speaker of your laptop or computer as possible. Play the service on YouTube. Your friend should be able to hear the service. Um, obviously, they won't see it. I've shortened the service time to about 50 minutes so that nobody goes over the one hour free limit for the telephone. And please check your telephone package so that the cost of the call isn't too great. If there's more than one person in the listening household, then of course you can put the phone speaker on for everybody to hear it if they wish. And if it's still a wee bit difficult to hear, then remember Elvis's advice. Put your laptop a little closer to the phone. It's been that kind of week. This was a warm-up we used to do when I did karate many years ago. Oh, yes, I did. Uh, it was very easy. First five minutes, oh, no problem. After all the jumping around and uh, press-ups we had to do, this was easy. But after 10 minutes, mm, 15 minutes, your arms get a bit sore and your fingers started to seize up. And it's the same these weeks. At the beginning, we thought that, yeah, maybe we could do this. Maybe we've got this. It was new. Our minds were engaged. We were preoccupied with trying to make it work, being creative, meeting the challenges. But now, and when we look at maybe who knows how many weeks to come, it's not quite as easy. The weight of this strange new life is perhaps beginning to tell on us. The weight of worry, the weight of boredom, the weight of loneliness and frustration, the weight of fear beginning to feel like a real and heavy burden. So how can we take our place among the wildly worshipping Palm Sunday crowds? with all that weight to carry. There's a hymn that says, Come, make your wants, your burdens known. And in the Bible we read, Cast your cares on him, for he cares for you. Let the Lord, let the Holy Spirit's power carry your bag, bear your burden, so that you can follow Jesus along the road and join in with the loud hosannas.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we love to hear the story of how you took Jerusalem by storm, cheered on by the crowds who loved you. Thank you for your courage, walking fearlessly into the place of your enemies, aware that this next week would end with your death on the cross for us. Thank you for your mercy and compassion, still loving as you will always love those who misunderstand you and count you as not worth bothering about. Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus, vast, unmeasured, boundless, free, rolling as a mighty ocean in its fullness over me. Underneath me, all around me, is the current of your love, leading onward, leading homeward to your glorious rest above. We bring to that love all the things that weigh us down, especially the sin that clings so tightly to us, asking that you would carry each burden and remove our sin far from us. Be with us now by the power of the Holy Spirit as we worship you and hear us as we pray in the words you gave, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Palm Sunday, the Sunday that Jesus went into Jerusalem as king. But what kind of king was he? Was he this kind of king? Like the Daleks, bright and shiny, um, full of power and determined to bulldoze their way through anybody that got in their way, exterminate, exterminate, exterminate. Or was he this kind of king? This is my wee friend, Stripey. You can maybe see why I call him Stripey. No, he's not bright and shiny. He just, oh, he just gets on with life, he gets on with people. He's quite gentle actually, compared to Derek the Dalek. So what kind of king was Jesus? Well, we know that he came into Jerusalem, not on a great big horse with an army, bright and shiny armour. He came into Jerusalem, just like Stripey, just seated on a donkey, just like all the other people round about him, that he'd always been like. So when we think of Palm Sunday, and we think of kings and we think of leaders, we shouldn't think of Daleks, exterminate, bulldoze everything in their path. But the kind of leader that Jesus chose to be, humble, it tells us, gentle, and riding on a donkey. Because that's the kind of king that God wanted him to be. And that's the kind of king that we need him to be like stripey, gentle, humble, lowly, riding on a donkey into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. And we sing this to the tune of O Susanna. You just need to make sure that uh, Feeds and Teaches is really quite fast in this verse. We know that Jesus cares for us in oh so many ways. Feeds and teaches, makes our whole heart clean and heals us from disease. Jesus, Jesus, he is our servant king. He loves us, meets our every need, and that is why we sing. Jesus, Jesus, he is our servant king. He loves us, meets our every need, and that is why we sing. Oh, how the crowds that Sunday welcomed him with open arms, with songs and loud hosannas, a red carpet made of palms. 
Jesus, Jesus, He is our servant King. He loves us, meets our every need, and that is why we sing. Jesus, Jesus, He is our servant King. He loves us, meets our every need, and that is why we sing. For Jesus is the King of Kings, to Him be all our praise. But He comes as one who serves, standing with us all our days. Jesus, Jesus, He is our servant King. He loves us, meets our every need, and that is why we sing. Jesus, Jesus, He is our servant King. He loves us, meets our every need, and that is why we sing. And now let's hear from Matthew's Gospel, the story of the first Palm Sunday. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, Say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfil what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I was quite shy when I was young, not a leader of people in any way. Uh, and in fact, my mother used to watch out the window when we were playing ropes. And I would always have the end of the rope, be calling the rope. Uh, and she used to shout at me, don't be such a big softy, you take your turn as well. Little did she know that I hated skipping, that I was frightened of that rope hitting me in the face. And I was really actually quite happy to stand and hold at the end of the rope. I much preferred Chinese ropes because they were on the ground and nowhere near your face. I surprised myself there for when I went to primary school and I was in primary seven and I had to take my turn as a monitor of the stairs to make sure people were behaving as they went up and down at different times. That meant, like all the other monitors, I got to shout things like, keep to the right. I know it should be keep to the left, but it's maybe a Kilmarnock thing. Keep to the right, no running, and best of all, keep quiet. I loved it. I was given power, permission to tell people what to do, and I chose to make the most of it. No more wee softy for me. Well, at least for 10 minutes a day on the stairs at Kirkstall Primary School. Jesus, Son of God, from before the beginning of the world, he was given power. What did he choose to make of it? Before we think more about that, we're going to sing a hymn that is a prayer inviting God to open our eyes because we want to see Jesus. Open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus. To reach out and touch him and 
say that we love Him. Open our ears, Lord, and help us to listen. Open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus. We've been looking over these past few weeks at Jesus, the teacher, the healer, the one who feeds our bodies, who cleanses us on the inside, is our all-round caregiver at all times. And today we see him as leader, the one who rules over us, the one who has power and authority. It was, the Bible tells us clearly, his destiny to be not just a person of power, but the person of power, King of kings, Lord of lords, name above all names. And like me on the primary school stairway, on Palm Sunday as he entered Jerusalem, Jesus had his chance. Here was the king coming to his castle, the ruler coming to the ruling city. What did he choose to do with that power? The power that was rightly his. What kind of leader did he choose to be? What did the king of kings choose to make of being a king? You'll find the answer in the donkey. Surely not, I hear you say. The answer in the donkey. Yes. In the Palm Sunday story we read in Matthew, 60% of it I counted. It's kind of that kind of week, isn't it? I counted it. 60% of that story is the donkey. And 40% is everything else, the waving crowds and the praise. So the donkey is the clear winner. And he answers the question, what kind of leader does Jesus choose to be? Well, the donkey is definitely in the stripy category. Not in the Dalek category. The donkey's a beast of burden, clip-clopping along, carrying folk to and fro, transporting sacks of flowers, pregnant women, folk who were less able the shopping trolley, pram and wheelchair of the Middle East. No battlefield heroics for them, no shiny metal armour, no pride of place. You would never see a donkey pulling a chariot. Oh, it was necessary in every part of everyday life, but in a very downbeat, ordinary way. And it was indeed regarded in Scripture as an animal of peace, of humility. When a victorious king rode back into the city on a donkey, that was the sign that peace had been won. There was no more need for big horses and chariots. That's what's at the heart of the passage we read. For the heart of that passage is the prophecy from Zechariah, see your king comes gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Gentle, a gentle king. It doesn't seem right. Surely kings have to be rough, tough, ruthless. Yet that's the picture of leadership that Zechariah points to as being from God. Gentle riding on a donkey, compassionate, forgiving, loving, kind. Yes, God can be tough, just as a parent can be tough on their children. But out of a desire to watch over them, not to rule over them. The essence of God is love. 
and his love stands behind every choice he makes. And Jesus, well, he is, as they say, his father out of the back, like father, like son. And so as he rides into Jerusalem to take the reins of his father's kingdom, he takes the reins of a donkey. And what a deliberate choice it is. Completely and utterly deliberate. This was not a chance choice that Jesus made. He was determined to do it. He said, all this planned out. I would say the donkey put in place. Its owners already given notice that people will come to get her. And what's the password? Well, the Lord needs them. But there's more to this planning to the deliberate choice of the donkey than a few days notice. The donkey was part of the plan hundreds of years before in that prophecy in Zechariah. See, daughter of Zion, your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey. The word of God about the king that he wanted for his people. And it was that word that Jesus chose because he knew the heart of his father, the kind of leader and king his father would want him to be. We find that too, not just in Zechariah, but in other prophecies in the Old Testament. A familiar one that we use at Easter is from Isaiah. To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Writes the prophet. Who's going to carry out the Lord's wishes? Exercise God's power? Well, we read in Isaiah 53. The tender shoot. The man of suffering, the one held in low esteem, the one pierced for our transgressions, the one led like a lamb to the slaughter, the one whose punishment brought us peace. And that was Jesus, through and through, just like Blackpool Rock from the beginning to the end, wherever you cut through it, the name is still there. And Jesus' character, Jesus' name, was gentle, humble, riding on a donkey, through and through, from beginning to end. His humble birth, spending time with the poor, the unloved, the powerless, offering God's gift of healing to everyone, not just those and such as those. Going from village to village to village, not wanting to go up in the world, when he gathered a great crowd of followers. Seeing individuals that nobody else saw in the middle of a huge crowd and hearing the faintest, even the unspoken cry. His whole life until that point was a match for the choice of a donkey over the Dalek, gentle over power grabbing, and the rest of his life, his final days, he would continue like that Blackpool Rock in the same way until, gentle and humble, he allowed himself to be placed on and nailed to a cross for us. What kind of leaders are we? For we're all leaders. We all have authority, we have power over others in some way, maybe in our jobs, in the church, in our families, even in our friendships. There will be people who look to us to make decisions, take the initiative, take the lead, exercise personal power, which, as we know, has the potential to be just as destructive or just as constructive as any political power from any political leader. For we know when people don't choose gentle, don't choose humble, don't choose the ways of Jesus, that opens the way to bullying, to abuse, 
to domestic violence and more. One of my uncles used to do arm wrestling, wrestling with me. It was good fun. And if we're honest, that's how many of our friendships are. Many of our family relationships. We seem to need to get the upper hand. And sometimes it is just fun. We poke fun at one another. We try to get the better of one another. But sometimes it's not. Sometimes in a cruel way. Yes, we all have some kind of power. And if we follow Jesus, we need to use it the way he does, which is the way of the donkey, not the way of the Dalek. More widely, when we pray beyond ourselves, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let's remember that we're praying for the donkey, for the gentle, loving ways of our Father God, not just for individuals, but for leaders and movers and shakers in our community and nation and world. What a difference it would make if our world leaders chose humble and gentle, if they chose donkey rather than Dalek. I don't believe our world, our human race, our community will survive this particular crisis if any one of us or any part of it chooses the way of the Dalek and not the way of the donkey, chooses the way of selfishness and greed and arrogance over the ways of gentle and humble the way of Jesus. If we do that, if we choose self-interest, if we choose the way of the Dalek, then indeed we will all be exterminated. And it won't be the virus that kills us. It will be ourselves destroying each other. But for our world and ourselves, that choice, the choice that Jesus made that first Palm Sunday, will, I believe, bring wholeness and peace to our troubled souls, to the troubled soul of our world. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. And now some more intimations before we have our time of prayer together. This evening there'll be a candlelight prayer service at seven o'clock, followed by Palm Sunday Praise from half seven till eight. And this will be an informal service 
uh, and some of the hymns have been chosen by uh, people who, who sent in their requests. We will have Holy Week services each evening, Monday to Friday, from 7pm, just short times of meditation and worship, beginning on April the 6th. On Thursday, there'll be the opportunity for those who wish to share the Lord's Supper together. If you want to do this, then please get ready with a small glass of juice or wine and some bread on a tray for the communion. For each person in your household who wishes to share that time. If you don't want to share communion, you're still able, of course, to join us for the service. On Good Friday, we'll have a time of quiet reflection and prayer and worship from 2 to 3 as we watch one hour remembering the last hour that Jesus had before he died on the cross for us. And there will be a Good Friday service at 7 o'clock that night. On Sunday, Easter Sunday, we'll have services at 11am. Again, we celebrate communion then. And an Easter praise service from 7 to 7.30pm. That's not right. From uh, 7.30 to 8pm is the Easter praise service. And at 7 o'clock is the prayer service, just as usual. And again, please suggest... Easter hymns or other Easter type hymns that you would like us to sing next Sunday night. And you can send them to me by messenger, email, text, uh, phone me. Um, and at the service we'll sing the hymns that you've chosen with the words on the screen. And anyone at all from far and wide can choose the hymns. If you want to remain anonymous, that's fine. Um, otherwise, I'll let people know that you've chosen the hymns. So please keep up to date with Facebook uh, by phoning in any other way that you can think of uh, that's not uh, breaking any of the reg regulations. There are some sad intimations this week. Funerals uh, of one of our members, Mrs May Phillips, and of another friend that many of us know, Lachlan Conker. May's service will be at Afton Cemetery on Tuesday, the, April the 7th at 11am. And Lockheed's service is at Afton Cemetery on Wednesday, April the 8th, also at 11am. The next again week, there'll be funerals of Stephen McEwen, the son of Alec and Carl Ann, and of Matt Torbett, another friend of many in the village. Stephen's funeral will be at Holmesford Bridge on Tuesday, April the 14th at half past ten. And Matt's funeral service at Mason Hill on Tuesday, April the 14th at quarter past one. Obviously, all of these services are restricted to close family members. But I'm sure you would want to remember the family and friends and pray especially for them at these times. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your ways and the ways of Jesus, the ways of love and humility, gentleness and peace, that you long to be at the heart of your world. We thank you that despite the chaos all around us, we can still worship and pray and praise, that this is still Palm Sunday, the coming week is still a holy week, that the cross of Christ can never be blotted out, Nothing can undo his death there for us. And nothing can overturn the victory over death that is ours through Jesus rising. As a token of our thanks, we give you in whatever way, our money, our possessions, our time, our talents, the opportunities we have. Father, we continue to ask that you bring an end to the coronavirus and the death and devastation and disruption caused by it. We ask for your wisdom and guidance for those trying to find a vaccine and work out the best way to fight COVID-19. We ask that you'd help provide the necessary equipment and resources for patients and medical staff. Give strength to all who care, that you would comfort the bereaved and heal those who are sick, whether because of COVID-19 or illnesses or other injuries. And we ask your peace for those worried about their jobs, 
their income, their future. We ask that your spirit and your ways of understanding and selflessness and love would influence the leaders of our world in their decisions. Keep your church strong at this time when we can't meet together and bring the light and warmth of your presence to those unable in any way to have fellowship with other Christians. Hear us in a moment of quietness as we name before you those about whom we are most concerned. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have heard and will answer all of our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we close our service with the word that we began with, the word the crowd shouted that Palm Sunday, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name with hearts full of praise. Be exalted, O Lord my God. Hosanna in the highest Glory, glory, glory to the King of Kings Glory, glory, glory to the King of Kings Lord, we lift up your name With hearts full of praise Be exalted, O Lord Hosanna in the highest. And now, go in peace to follow Jesus and to learn his ways of peace. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you forever. Amen.